Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. For those of you who are new here, welcome. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. In today's video, I'll be finishing up my coloring book collection video with all of the pencils and pens that I've purchased through January and June of 2021, as well as talking about my giveaway. And if that is of interest to you, please stay tuned. Okay, so the way that I'm going to segment this out is this first portion is going to be the pencils and I won't give a lot of time to it, um, but I do like flipping through the pencil cases and I want to talk about them a little bit. And then I will show you some coloring books and then I will talk to you about the giveaway. Okay, so if you're only interested in the giveaway, uh, all of it will be time stamped below and you can just go there. When you get to the giveaway portion, you do definitely need to pay attention to the rules because there are some very specific ones but let's talk about pencils okay so uh, I chose to show this one first to you guys uh, because it was the first on the, the shelf <laughs> and so I did purchase all of these between January 2021 and June 2021 and that's um, the same uh, time frame that I was showing my coloring books and so these are the Crayola skin tone ones I've talked about it before I'm not a huge fan of Crayola pencils but I am always in the market of a skin tone pencil and so I did purchase these they work exactly how I thought they would but at least if I am willing to put in the effort because really that's what it is how much pain am I willing to do in order to get a, a nice color well then yeah I'll use these plus I can never have too many pinks or too many browns these are the two sets of the Black Widow skin tone sets. Now they're all mixed up, uh, but it's the both the light and the dark section. I'm not sure how I feel about these. I will be doing a separate video talking about pencils that you will not see any pencils actually in. Yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, but these are the Black Widow sets right there. And then the rest of this case are my, oh no, I'm a liar. Uh, these are the I think it's 12, two, four, six, eight, ten. yeah, 12 Montmartre Skin Color Pencils. These I bought secondhand from my friend Susie. I'll link her channel below. I am currently testing these out in Erie. I will actually test these out in some other books. Uh, I'll talk about that in, when I do the pencil review video. Uh, but these I've segmented because these are the colors that I've been using in Erie. And then these I've segmented because these are the colors I'm using on the Winnie the Pooh page. And it's just easier for me to keep it in a case otherwise generally speaking um, they are in color family now for some of you um, this might be driving you insane because there's a space here you can sort of be okay with this but then my color range isn't from light to dark dark to light basically so long as it's in a color family I'm just gonna stick it there I don't need it to go from lightest to darkest but I know yes it's, it's um, causing some of you guys some pain and for some of these pencils you might notice that they have never been sharpened and to be perfectly honest I will only ever sharpen a pencil when I'm about to use it I don't sharpen pencils as soon as I get them or right before I put them in the case because to me that's just a lot of wasted energy and so if I start with a pencil and it doesn't lay down correctly like these here uh, I'm not sure if they're a sharpened pencil the way they came or if I sharpen them So if it doesn't lay down the way I think it should I'll sharpen it and then that'll tell me whether or not nope It's just a, a dud of a pencil or yes, that's that was the problem and you'll see that um, Even when I get to my prismas, I've had my prismas. I think the longest but unless I've used the color There's no point for me. That's just a lot of extra work now for some of you again that might be driving you crazy like oh she doesn't put them in order she doesn't sharpen them but i think this is all very personal to whoever has them and to be honest of late i like looking for the pencils that have not been sharpened and making it a challenge to myself well all right well those are the blues i'm going to use because i haven't used them yet 
I know, it's all about fun games for me. And then again, more brought funners. Again, probably driving you guys uh, crazy because what what is your system here? But it works for me. These are some pinkies. Those are some purples and reds, blues and greens. I'm very casual when it comes to my coloring. So this has a lot of sets. I do prefer cases over the tins or whatever. Uh, for my storage purposes, it just works better. And if I can do multiple sets in um, one case, that's even better because that's just less cases I need to have. But those is that set right there. Now, when I do put these away, I do uh, zip them up. I like to have them secure because I don't want them flopping around. Uh, but I know that some people who just always keep their pencil cases open. But I have minimal space and I always have to kind of Tetris things if I want to work with one set or another. So yeah, I will be closing it, but I'll do it off camera. Okay, this is my Prisma case and I just went pretty <laughs> simple, uh, happy planner tag or sticker and then I just use some tape to tape it down uh, just because I have two black cases and I didn't want to get confused and so this definitely has a lot of room again might drive some of you crazy because they're not light to dark and they seem to be a bit random but it works for me there are still some in here that I have not sharpened and so again those are pencils um, that I might use before coming back to another one just because I haven't used them. And I believe I purchased these in like February or March. I'd have to look on my Amazon uh, listing or at my tracker that I, I keep. But I know I've had them for a few months, but looking at this, they probably look brand new to you. When I do pencil work, um, I don't tend to use a lot of it. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, I don't do a lot of layering. I don't do a lot of burnishing. I don't do a lot of blending. And so to me, I can pick three colors, kind of smush them together like Erica says, but I don't go for realism or, you know, no white space. I actually like how the white of the page looks on it. So uh, I don't sharpen these and I, I don't know what it is, but I know people like a really, really sharp pencil. I will use it until it becomes just too difficult <laughs> to not use anymore. So something like this might drive some of you crazy, but that's all of that that I can use. I mean, I can figure it out, um, but I'd rather not sharpen my pencils and use as much as I can. Uh, one, because these are expensive, and two, I mean, again i'm just coloring to relax so i'm not going to get too crazy into the details now sometimes i need because the space is small but if it goes outside the lines i mean there's no coloring book police that i'm aware of <laughs> but those are my prisma pencils okay so the next two pencils this is the only one that i actually keep in the case and uh, really it's because I favor my ink tents and so that's my go-to but this is small enough for me that if I need to I can actually have it out on my desk and I can just use now I believe this comes in a much bigger set I don't know why but I'm always on the look for browns and pinks this has no pinks but I'm not gonna buy any more of these these don't look to be very used but they are water soluble pencils so you don't need a lot of it and so you'll notice that most of my pencils look brand new now these are working pencils I like to get in all of them as much as I can I don't collect books just for the sake of having them and I don't collect pencils for the sake of having them but yeah this is pencils that I have purchased in in the first six months of 2021 and then these are my ink tents and they're the only pencils I've actually done swatch charts on and it was more so because once you get to the black pencil um, a lot of the barrels look the same or a lot of the tipped ends look the same Plus, because I am washing it out, you can actually get quite a gradient of tone and I might be looking for that. So this made sense to me. None of my other pencils have swatch charts. I just, I cannot be bothered with that. And then this one, I want to say came in the order. It came in the tins. I'm not sure, but I am very particular to put these back in order. And so whatever the order there is here is the order it is in 
here. And I also try to make a point of keeping all the names up. For this one, this is the only one that I do that. I actually don't care for any of the other pencils because it ties to this more so than I'm looking for a particular color. Although apple and hooker's green <laughs> are my favorites. <laughs> and then it goes into these right here. And this is the full set of the ink tents. I don't know that I've actually sharpened any of these. Again, I'm going to get as much pigment as I can of that right there before I feel the need to sharpen. Uh, eventually, I believe I need to purchase some of those pencil extenders, but clearly based on my usage, that's going to be a couple of years, but that's fine. It's not that I don't like the look of a short pencil. It's just for me, I want to use it all as much as possible. Once it either becomes too difficult to use <clears throat> or I'm not enjoying the pencil, then yeah, I'll sharpen it. I've got a doll 133. It's amazing. I love it. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not too fussed about coloring outside of the lines or different colors blending into different spaces. If you're that close to look at my coloring book, we are not socially distancing and there, there are other problems that we're going to need to discuss. <laughs> but those are actually all of my pencils. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. I do actually have pencils at work, but I'm not going to show you those. It's Artezas, it's some Prismas, and it's some Brett Funners, and yeah. But this is what I have at home, and this is where I do the uh, majority of my coloring. Okay, so these are my Ohuhu um, marker sets. This one here is actually the very first one I purchased. Um, purchasing alcohol markers from Amazon is difficult for me because a lot of the vendors will not uh, send to Hawaii. This one I actually got from walmart.com. The other two I actually was able to get from Amazon. So I click a lot of links to find alcohol markers because I love alcohol markers. But this is the very first set. I have some Art 101 alcohol markers in here as well. And that's just because I do prefer these kind of pouches for my markers than having them just flying around in other places. And so this is my first set. I actually have already used um, one of the, the pens in here, but I just toss it. I don't do the... Um, empties i think people do yeah i have no interest in that so i don't i don't show it but the other two that i picked up is this one right here which is the skin tone now all of these art 101s actually came as a set so all of these little skinny barrels you see i did purchase from walmart.com but again i just insert them into a case that they fit and this is the skin tone that i was able to get from amazon And this is the pastel set that I was able to get from Amazon as well. I believe I bought this during Prime Days, which I'm pretty sure was in June. And then I actually had picked this up earlier than that. And then those alcohol markers were again in the beginning of the year. To be honest, I didn't realize that alcohol markers were a thing in coloring books until I discovered Color Tube. Because I think I've heard them because I like to watch various artists here on YouTube. But I didn't realize that people use them in coloring books and how well they work. Uh, but yeah, those are all of my Ohuhus. I do have that big, uh, like 216 set of Limones or something like that. But I, those are a backup stash once I run out of a lot of these colors. So yeah, I, I picked that up as well. Uh, and I've talked about it before, but it's not actually part of my working stash. These here are my Tombos. I'm sorry if the glare on the plastic is crazy. This actually was a makeup brush a case that I'm repurposing. And uh, these are 12 piece Tombow alcohol marker that my brother bought for me. Um, and they're in the gray line. I actually use a ton of gray. So uh, the one Ohuhu marker that I finished was a gray one. So I really enjoy these. I did purchase these Sharpie markers. It's a 24 set from Sam's Club. Uh, Sharpies aren't exactly an alcohol marker, but they have a lot of the same properties. And I actually have been really enjoying these uh, so much more so that I've actually picked up some permanent markers from Shuttle Art. Uh, I won't show you them because they're not um, in the time frame. Uh, but yeah, I do really enjoy these. 
they don't blend as easily, but I don't actually do a lot of blending, but I like the saturation. So they give you just enough saturation that I don't feel like I'm, I'm pooling or puddling because Sharpies don't do that. Um, and I do like the, the color range. So if you've been thinking about alcohol markers and you either have no access or they're just out of your price range, uh, just try a few Sharpie markers. Again, it's gonna bleed through, so you're, you're gonna wanna use it on single-sided pages, and then a blotter sheet just to be super safe. But yeah, you might get some of the feels that you would get with alcohol markers, but something that might be readily accessible. And if it's not a Sharpie per se, um, anything permanent marker um, should give you the same effects. I have a bunch of Tombos. I actually just picked some randomly from my uh, cup because they, they are on the side of me. But these aren't inherently what I've picked up between that time frame because I use uh, Tombos for journaling. I use Tombos for work. To me, this is just a, a really interesting highlighter color. Uh, but it is something that I do incorporate uh, quite a bit into my coloring. So I just wanted to show you those. And the final markers I'm going to be showing you are these super tips. Again, I don't know that I bought that in the time frame between January and June, but are, there are markers that I use since I've rediscovered coloring. So to me, it still counts. This is a hundred, a set of super tips. I keep them in the box because I haven't found a, a method of storing them otherwise. As you can see, they're not in order. Again, I'm sorry if that's bothersome to you. I just basically jam them in where they fit. And as you can see, there are a ton of greens in here. There's mostly greens in here, but I like a lot of leaves and plants, so that's not problematic. But yeah, that's the last set of markers. Let me show you the books. Okay, so there's a huge stack of books here, and there's a reason for this. This is my coloring book collection and completed pages videos between January and June. Some of you might have seen some of these in a haul. Some of you might have never seen some of these uh, because some I never featured, and that's because these are coloring books that I've bought between that time frame that I've realized I am not going to color in. So I've numbered them, there is a reason for that, but I'm gonna go through each one of them and talk to you why, and then we'll finally get to the giveaway part. All right, so let's get started. This is a coloring book by Hannah Carzon, Daydreams. I purchased this back in June. And I purchased this because I had just gotten the, uh, I think it's the Dutch version, I'm not sure, but the Enchanted Forest or Forest Kingdom or whatever that new one is, the green book. I thought, ooh, I like the art. Uh, let me get another one. Again, I hadn't really at that time realized I was not a collection or collector of coloring books. And then I looked at that one, I looked at this one, and I like the art just fine. Hannah Carlson is not one of my faves. I know there are some out there who she is your number one favorite artist. I like her work, but it's not um, high on my I'm going to work in her work kind of book. And even though something like this I think is really intriguing, I was realizing that I have the one. I've done two pages in and I don't gravitate towards that one. I don't want to keep a coloring book because there's one page or two pages or three pages that I like. And so yeah, that's why it's not part of my collection, but it is book number one. Again, that, that's important, all right? Daydreams by Hannah Carlson. Second one is this one, a Studio Ghibli coloring book. Now, in one of the tags I recently did, it was a question about, did you purchase a book that you regret? And this would probably be the only one that falls under that category, but to be perfectly honest, I purchased this back in January when I had rediscovered my um, passion and love for coloring, and I didn't really know what it was that I liked. Now, I remember my, my mind frame being, well, this is way simpler than most of the other ones that I have. I have seen a few Studio Ghibli um, cartoons, so yeah, it'll be an easy coloring. This is, to me, it's boring. And so I have never colored anything in it. So there is a little bit of a regret, but I also, I didn't know. And I didn't know um, enough of what my style was at that point. So I'm not mad at myself, but yeah. Studio Ghibli coloring book number two is one of the purchases for this year. 
This one right here might surprise you. Now this would have been the only Camellia Angel Cova book that would have been in my arsenal. And I actually did some research. There were quite a few books I was looking at and I looked at flip throughs of them and I decided on this one. Now it's not like I don't like the artwork. In fact, I like the artwork and I like um, that it tells you what the picture is, right? I think that's interesting. But when I got it, I was like, oh, I've got 50 something coloring books up there. Am I actually going to color in this? Because again, I don't want anything on the shelf that isn't going to be colored in within the next few months. It's about timing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. Even with old Garani's, maybe only because Olga Rani's challenges monthly and weekly that I would even get into here. But this is not a coloring book that excites me, even though I did the research. It wasn't that I just bought it blind. Um, and so this is 50 Amazing Mythical Creatures by Camellia Angel Cova, and this is book number three. I have talked about this one. I purchased this from Sam's Club in April. This is book number four, The Chronicles of Narnia. I actually do like this book. Um, not so keen on like the pattern wallpaper pages, but something like this, uh, I would have colored. It's just, again, I'm getting to the point or I've gotten to the point where I don't want a book because one or two pages interest me. In fact, we have yet got to a page that I'm likely to do. So something like this, a one page thing, interesting um, artwork, but then nothing else. And so it's not something I, I wanna keep. I have limited space. And if I'm not going to color in it, I'm not going to keep it. And so that's the Chronicles of Narnia, uh, a story by C.S. Lewis, and the illustrations are by Pauline Baines. This one was definitely a spur of the moment. I had seen someone haul it. The pictures looked so cute. This would have been the, the, the only Coco Wyo book that I had and I purchased Time to Travel with Baby Cat, a coloring book. And basically, if you've seen these, it's just this little cat character going all around the world. See, that's a really cute page. I'm always drawn to Hawaii pages just because that's where I live. Um, but when I got it, I'm like, are you really gonna color this though? Now, not to say that I haven't seen some, well, honestly, I can't remember if anyone's actually colored in these. I see books being hauled all the time. I don't know that I see books being colored in all the time. So I can't say that any of this line of baby animals traveling, I've seen people color in, but I didn't think I would. Again, limited time, is this the, the book I'm going to give my time to? And that was a no. So time to travel with baby cat. Uh, and that's book number five. This is another one I had seen. It would have been, I don't know that I have any creative heaven and I certainly don't have any Teresa Goodridge. Um, and this I saw on someone's channel and I love the level of detail of her pictures. And because I t tend to f um, favor like whimsy, uh, fantasy, fairy tale, things like that, this would give me a bigger range of types of pictures, especially if there's uh, like Danny Button's scavenger hunt tags. There are just certain things I don't have because they're not certain things I favor. And this is a beautiful coloring book. Don't get me wrong. But then if I'm being honest with myself, am I going to color this? Yeah, probably not. And I don't want anything taking room on my shelf that's just there for pretty pictures. That's what the internet is for. <laughs> so that is Wish You Were Here, a coloring book by Creative Haven. Uh, the artist is Teresa Goodrich, and that's book number six. Now this one I had purchased back in April. I specifically purchased this one because the color by numbers that I was seeing just didn't really interest me as someone who wanted to color in them. I love seeing people uh, showing their completed pages that include uh, coloring by numbers or color by colors. I love that. I mean, I love that people are using their stuff. That's what really does it for me. And so I had seen that this one was very detailed and it absolutely is highly detailed. 
This was probably the only book, if you had asked me a few months ago what overwhelmed or intimidated me, it would have been this one because the spaces are so small. But to be honest, it takes the fun out. I mean, I know I can color this any way I want to, but the purpose of this book is to color by number. And I want to color what I want to color. And I only, you know, that's something I didn't really understand until recently, probably in the last few months. But it's just not something that excites me. And this certainly is not something that's going to help me unwind. I know that uh, for many color by color, color by number, mandala books, I'll do that. It does not do that for me. <laughs> so this would have been the first uh, George Tufexis that I would have had in my arsenal. Spectacular Spring Scenes, color by number, and that's book number seven. This one here, I think I uh, purchased like April or May, and I purchased this for one picture. And the picture I uh, purchased this one was for Hawaii. <laughs> That's a King Kamehameha statue. Uh, that is Aloha Tower. That is the Arizona Memorial. This is the Punch Bowl Memorial. That's Diamond Head. Tiki's are synonymous with Hawaii because that's where they were created. This here, I believe, is the museum. It actually tells you where these things are. And then this is Iolani Palace. So I thought, okay, this would be fun because again, once we get into the fall winter, you're going to see a lot of things which are people's realities. People equate Hawaii with summer, I equate Hawaii with home. So I like representing it where I can. But as much as I love these other pictures, yeah, I'm not gonna color them. And I'm not gonna keep a book if I only wanna color one page. And I was thinking, okay, the circle of life is everyone's favorite. And that's probably the reason why I don't want it because everyone has it. <laughs> but I thought, well, maybe I'll give some of my circle vibes with this book. Yeah, no. So this is a cre creative haven book, Circular Cities by David and Legina Bodo. And this is book number eight. Now this might surprise you, but this is Steampunk Special by Coloring Heaven. Uh, and I really enjoy this book. But for whatever reason, they sent me a second copy. And so I have my book. <laughs> so this is an extra. And it's not a book that I feel I need to keep an extra on. And so that is Steampunk Special, Coloring Heaven, number nine uh, of books that I've received between January and June. Now this one might surprise you because I love mythographic. I love that it's single-sided. I love how there's buildings on this. I love all of the nature and the flowers and the leaves. The reason that this was not included in my collection, and this is one that I will not be coloring in, is because I have too many books. I have three mythographics right now. I have one at work. I pre-ordered the one that's coming out in October, I believe. And the only reason I pre-ordered it is because it's a new artist. As far as I'm aware, uh, either Fabiana Atanasio or Joseph Kantenbong are the artist of these mythographic books. That one is someone new. And so I wanted to see what the work is. Now I may not keep it. I might just keep it for something at the end of the year, but I certainly wanted to pick it up and they are hard to come by here in Hawaii. They show up in the shelves like a few months later. But because of space, even though it's something that I love, I've got, well, actually I have four books now that have at least, what, 20, 30, 40 pages in it. So if I feel the need to color fish and buildings, I'm sure I can find something in something that I have that I've already colored in. And so this really was a, a hard decision because I do enjoy it, but I want to give love to the books that I've already started. And so just keeping adding to collect things, just it isn't for me, guys. I'm sorry, but it isn't. And so that's Mythographic Enchanted Castles by Fabiana Atanasio. And the final book is The Time Garden by Daria Song. I've seen some of her other ones and I've been, <laughs> I was thinking about purchasing them and then I realized, you know what, Johanna, you can't buy books because you like the artwork. And you're like, yes, of course you can. And yes, of course I can. But I want to buy books that I like the artwork that I am excited to color in. I am not excited to color in this. 
at all. Now this is one of the ones I purchased uh, when I first started my coloring journey back in January 2021. I love the art in here. I love the art in some of the other ones that she has even more. Not enough to spend another 10 or $15 to get something that I may or may not color in uh, and certainly not enough to keep. And so even though it's a really pretty book, I'm, I'm not going to keep it. And that's where we get to the giveaway. So there are some rules. I will go ahead and put them in the description box. There are some very specific rules. So just, you know, either read the description box very clearly or just kind of take some notes and, and pay attention to what I'm going to say. Because <laughs> if you don't meet the criteria, you're, you're not having any possibility of winning. Okay, first rule is you do need to be over the age of 18 in order to win this giveaway because you need to provide your address to me. I do want to deal with just adults. Rule number two, you do need to put in the comment below uh, either your Instagram page, and it does have to be a public page as well as a non-giveaway page. There are private pages on Instagram. There are also giveaway pages on Instagram. Neither of those would qualify because I will be looking at Instagram or if you don't have an Instagram page that meets that criteria uh, you would need to in the comment section put an email address that you check with regularity uh, when I do giveaways and I've done these in the past I will actually reach out to the winners before I announce it because I want to make sure that you actually are cool with giving me your address and all of that so I will be either DM you on Instagram which is my preferred method or I will be emailing you but I do need both of those things or I need at least one of those things with Instagram being my preference down in the comments please know that the comments are public and so anyone will be able to see that information okay uh, the next thing you need to do in the comment section preferably all in one comment is uh, put enter me <laughs> so I know that you're actually entering this giveaway and the reason why these are numbered is there are going to be three winners who could potentially win three books and then there's going to be one winner who's going to win the last two. I'm going to have four winners because these 11 books I want out of my house. <laughs> I don't want to have any more room dedicated to keeping these because I'm not going to use them. They're all uncolored. They're brand new in that they're all uncolored. Some of them will have this little tag on there. I'm just going to leave that. Um, this I'll be able to just take up easy enough. But if you are interested in all of the books, then just put all, and then I'll just uh, choose an assortment once I get to the random generator for the comment picker. If you are only interested in a few of them, then put those numbers down in the order of your preference. If you like 10, 7, 3, 4, 2, then write that down. As much as possible, I'd like to match up winners with the actual books. But again, I want to get rid of all of these 11 books. So that is something that I'd need you to put down in the comment section. Now this is going to be open internationally. So long as I can ship uh, from Hawaii to wherever it is that you live, you're 18 years old and you do all those other stuff, then I will handle all of the shipping costs. And I wear that uh, internationally, that can be a beast, but I'm fully prepared to do that. Um, if possible, I will try to ship it so that it has a tracking number. Uh, because I used to have an Etsy shop, I'm aware that there are some places that don't offer that kind of shipping. Uh, but I will screenshot or I'll take a picture of the label so that you know that, yes, I've addressed it to you, my address, you'll see the postage paid. And that gives you some indication of that it's been sent out. And um, the only thing I won't be able to cover is if your country, if you are international and you win, uh, there is custom or tariff charges. Unfortunately, I won't be able to send that. These are sort of one and dones. If for any reason any of this is lost in the mail, unfortunately, there is no there is no inherent value to this. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I follow enough uh, groups on Facebook that I know that sending things to the mail is still an issue. I don't want to scare any of you guys. By and large, I've, I've never had any problems, but just to be aware of that. However, uh, 
you do not need to be a subscriber. Now, I am thankful, appreciative, humbled by all of my subscribers, but I don't wanna gain subscribers because the only reason you're subscribing is because you're entering a giveaway. That just, there's, there's no point to that. So uh, I'm not, that's not even something that I'm going to be checking. Yes, would I like to uh, have a thank you to all of my subscribers and whatever genre they have found me in? Sure, but there's no way that you can actually just target those people. And so I'm just gonna open it to anyone, so long as you're 18, so long as you provide the information I've requested, we're, we're good to go. Uh, if you do subscribe to my channel, um, I'm hoping that you find the content interesting. Okay guys, so this is going to be open. Um, this video will be loaded on Saturday, August 21st. It will be open through August 31st. I will reach out to uh, the winners uh, probably late the 31st of August or on September 1st. Hopefully get all of that information and then get them out that weekend. That's why I, I put the time frame as such. Now once I reach out to you, you will have 72 hours to respond or I will pick someone else. All right guys, well that's it for me for now. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in a comment below. And as always, Aloha!